Hi, welcome back to my studio. My name is Barbara Swift and you're watching Be Swift Art. In this video we're going to paint bananas on our banana tree painting that we started in part one. This is now part two. You can see I already drew a couple bananas there and started to paint them. This is the picture that I'm going from. So it's got all kinds of bananas, little bananas on the sides. Um, there, some are riper, some are greener, or the sun is shining on them more, so they're a little more yellow. In this picture, you can really see the definition of those little tiny baby bananas. It's kind of an exaggerated shadow for this painting, but they're not round. They have little ridges in them, so we're going to try to capture that. So here we are at the the painting. I have a couple that I've painted in before. I'm using Daniel Smith watercolors, Hansa Yellow Light, and I have um, Daniel Smith Permatex Serpentine yeah, Genuine, and also Daniel Smith Viridian, which I like. It's kind of like a teal color. I may use a little of this dioxine purple, uh, maybe not. I'm, I will definitely put it in there somewhere, but I might use it at the banana shadows between the bananas on the bottom there. So we'll see as the painting goes along. A lot of times you make your decisions as you're painting. And I'm using my Da Vinci number no. 5 round brush. I like these brushes a lot because they have a nice point, a nice tip on them. They hold a lot of water. You don't have to use a fancy brush, you can just use whatever you have. I have some uh, where I drew here, I drew the shadow, so I'm going to erase those because I don't want the line there where the shadow is, but I kept it there as I was drawing it so I would remember it. So I just erased that. Okay, we got to get some clear, clean water. I'm going to do the entire banana in the clear water. This is going to be the wet on wet technique. That's wet paint on wet paper. I'm using Arches 300 pound cotton paper cold press. You don't have to use 300 pound. I just kind of got used to using that. And I like it because it doesn't ever wave or bubble on me when I get it too wet. I'm just going to fill in the entire banana. I am being careful to stay in the lines because wherever you have water, your paint will follow. So the wet on wet technique allows your colors to blend softly. So if you were doing a wet on dry technique, then it would be more, um, I guess you would say they would stay exactly where you painted them and not flow. Or wet on wet, they're going to flow nice and soft. So that's why I'm using this technique so the colors blend together more. Started out with the base of the yellow. Did the entire thing in the yellow because that's going to represent sunshine. And there's the sun is shining on that whole bottom cluster of the bananas. Now remember, I had that little line drawn there that kind of showed the, the shape of the banana. So this is for shadow and the shape. So I want to draw that line right in there, just like that. And I'm being careful not to be too wet because I have wet water, wet yellow. Now I got the wet green paint I'm going on top. So it's not too soupy wet because if it was, it would just fill in the entire banana. Put a little bit of dab there and just kind of show that the banana rounds before it goes into the stem. And also right here, kind of put a little bit of a shadow. This is where its banana is curving around to the back of the banana. So just a tiny shadow on this side. And also the sun is kind of shining upward from that bottom right hand corner onto this cluster. So the whole bottom cluster is a little bit brighter than the top clusters are. And they might be more ripe for all. I know, I, I would think it'd be the opposite. I'm not really an expert on bananas by any means, but 
Anyway, I just following the picture that I got off of Pixabay. So I'm just kind of shaping it a little bit and putting a little bit extra green. I'm just dabbing it in there because it will flow naturally with the water. So I just kind of take the tip of my brush and just dab, dab, dab. Go down the stem a little bit because that's going to be in shadow. So I got a little bit more of that green because as it dries and as it spreads it loses its intensity. So I'm going ahead and while it's still damp, I'm going to dab in a little bit more green. Kind of give that really soft shadow effect, trying to give shape to the banana itself. So each individual banana, you got to kind of look at it and see where the shadows are, what the shape is, because that's going to make the shadows, that's the definition of the banana. So. Now on the next one here, I'm doing the same thing. I erased a little bit of a shadow line that I had drawn in there and I put the water on. There's the yellow. Always start with your lightest color and then work your way to the dark one. Just put some more of that um, Serpentine Genuine Green on there. This one has a little bit more green because it's kind of in the back of the bunch. So you're always thinking. I always thinking of how much light would be hitting this and where would I have to put a shadow to make the definition or the shape of the banana. So I'm working every other banana because I don't want to paint next to anything that's wet or it will just spread right into that wet banana. So let them dry and then I come back and do the ones in between. So this one has the shape of the banana there where I just drew that line, but I'm also shadowing or shading be behind it so it looks like the bananas behind the two next to it are in the front. So we're going to go and do that again over on this side. I have a few hidden bananas. There's three of them in that little space. This is the one that's farthest back. So I'm going to go ahead and put the yellow on, because if I didn't put the yellow, they wouldn't have the same tone. But it is a little farther back, so it's going to have more shade as the bananas in front of it shade it. Okay, that was a little bit wet, so I let it dry just a little bit, and I come over here and start this one. Put the water on, and then the yellow, and now that one had a time to soak into the paper a bit. Come back, put the green on. And here I'm putting the shadows on. And that one's almost completely in shadow because it's behind the two. So I'm just working both of them at the same time. You can do this the more experience you have, the faster that you can paint. Of course, this is speeded up for the video's sake or you'd be watching me for 16 hours painting this painting. <laughs> so it takes several days to finish it. But just to kind of give you the idea of how to do it. You can always ask me questions in the comments if you want me to answer something for you. Go ahead, leave me a comment and I'll answer you. So this one, the light is definitely on the right hand side, kind of coming up from the, the bottom. <laughs> Say that twice, banana, banana, bottom banana. <laughs> anyway, so I put the shadows in and this one's tucked way behind so it's going to be in a deeper shadow not going to see much of the yellow at all. This one's kind of in between. It's not exactly hidden, but it's not all the way up front like some of the bananas, the one next to it is. So it's going to have a little bit more shade, just kind of where the definition of the shape of the banana is. And then as it is, it's right next to the banana on the right. It's going to have some shadow in there. So there I'm just did a little lifting out and I'm going to be doing a little bit more of that and I'll explain how I do that. But it basically I'm rinsing my brush completely of paint and then drying it off as best as I can and then coming back over it and it'll suck it up like a sponge. Now, now you know why I called this video Go Bananas because look at all these bananas. <laughs> it's repetition. It's over and over and over. 
always thinking about the shape, thinking about the shadows, and each individual individual banana will be just a little bit different because of its position coming off of that stem. So they're kind of clumps on one side and then the next one's kind of on the other side and then there's one in the center. So there's little clumps of bananas as we're going up. I have four clumps in this picture and in the reference photo there were even more. So I decided to make it less just for my sanity's sake. <laughs> so this over here, they're a little bit more green than the first clump, but they still are in that sunlight. So I am shading the ones that are behind the ones that are in front of it. So you can see I put that green in there. I'm shading the part that curves into the stem. So try to give that rounded effect and keeping in mind the shape of the banana so it kind of almost has sides to it. It's not round round. A little bit, little bit of ridge in there. And this one here is more in the foreground. There's bananas behind it. So I want to keep some of that sunlight yellow shining on the one side of it. And then I put my shade in there. So I am putting the green, genuine, and also the viridian. So the viridian I'm using to make a darker shadow and the green I'm using basically for its green color. And the viridian kind of deepens the shadow. So you'll see a little bit more of that as I do the bananas that are way behind. I'm going to just use viridian on them and then come back with the green on top of that to make it deeper. These bananas are a little bit more yellow on this side and on that bottom, so I'm leaving that little bit bright yellow. And same here. So the top of the banana is kind of darker and the bottom of the banana is more yellow as the sun is shining up onto that. There's the shadow that shows that the other banana is little bit in front of that or as actually it's the shape of the banana if, remember I said head sides I'm gonna show that as well and so on and so on keep painting the bananas <laughs> one after another <laughs> kind of like putting a puzzle together you like jigsaw puzzles and reminds me of doing jigsaw puzzles in a way side showing those ridges in the banana and the shadows in the same spot really. So put my water down, put the yellow down, and then add the green. Wipe it out a little bit if it gets a little out of control. Put a little bit of that viridian in there. And that's that cluster. There's still bananas behind that cluster, so those ones we'll paint next. And those bananas have completely dried, so now as I'm starting this another banana here next to it, it won't blend the paint into the previous banana. So always make sure they're dry if they're touching edges. So then I put my shadows in, I put my viridian in, and these ones are a little bit deeper in shadow, so I'm going to put the viridian first. I'm not even going to bother with the yellow because I don't really want it to be too bright, because those ones are way, way in the back. They're row three. They're in the bleachers. And this one I went ahead and did it the traditional way that we have a tradition now because there's so many <laughs> and we'll just paint that water on there I got the yellow green kind of mixed it together coming back with that green a little bit of the uh, viridian in there and the, sh and the to make those shadows deeper So 
basically it's, you know, yellow green. Yellow and viridian. Not viridian, I'm sorry. The, um, serpent, serpentine. Jenny, that's the green I'm using. And the viridian. The viridian's the blue green. Okay, there's just serpentine genuine. Because these ones don't have much yellow in them, and the Serpentine Genuine has a lot of yellow in that pigment. So I don't need to add too much of that as it's coming around the back of the bunch, so it shows a little bit of depth as it kind of curves around. Because those bunches, we want them to look curved. And I'm stopping at that one point at the bottom of the stem because there's almost like a little fan that holds all those bananas together in a cluster and it's all connected they're not separate the bananas kind of start where it separates so just go to that point because we're going to make that darker and these are now that those are dry i'm going to come back and put some of those bananas in that are in the background and I'm just going to start with the Viridian, and then I'll come back and put green on them. This one I started with just the green, and I'm putting another uh, layer on top of it, deepening it, deepening it up. And you see those are dry, so we'll go ahead and put these ones that are behind it in a darker green. No yellow in this one, just the um, serpentine genuine. I go ahead and still can see a little bit of the shape of that banana so I put that line in the middle and then drew it down and it's a little darker because it's in the shadow. Same thing with this one there is the green. So I'll kind of speed this up because it's just more and more of the same. They're all dry where my arm is laying on them. And I'm using the Viridian first because up here they're even darker, they're even more shaded. So I put the Viridian first and then I put the ver uh, Serpentine on top because I want that green color. But I really want that depth, so that blue and that Viridian gives it that depth. So you can still see the sh shape of the banana even though it's in shade. So just not as um, prominent. So still working. Oops, forgot to put my water on there, but that's okay because it's going to be a really dark one. I'm pretty much just filling it in and not blending any colors into it. And I'll put the water on this one. And there's my Serpentine Genuine because those bananas are in the for forefront still can see the definition of the shape so I went ahead and shaded that and left the one side lighter but still using um, the serpentine and then the viridian to deepen it. So I put the viridian down first and then put the serpentine on top when I want it to really just be darker, much darker for the background bananas and the kind of mid bananas I put down the green first and then Viridian for the shadows where I put the yellow first for the ones on the bottom because they had a lot of sunlight and I wanted that yellow to show through more than green so these ones I'm just concentrating on them being a greenish yellow and their shadows still putting the water down first because now when I put the shape with the um, Viridian, it'll blend a soft line, not, not a harsh, hard line. It'll blend. I also want to make sure that they look rounded on the top and the bottom, so I put a little bit of shadow there. This is really sped up, but I am allowing it to dry in between. So these bananas that it's touching are already dry. And that's, you know, pretty dark back there. 
So make my paint a little bit thicker. That is watered down so that I really get more intense color. And just blending them in. So when I blend it in, I wipe all the paint off my brush and then just take a dry clean brush and just paint over the top and that'll just kind of blend the two colors in together. Almost done with these bananas. That one's in the background so it got Viridian first and then the green. So that'll make the ones in the foreground stand out a little better and then here I'm just kind of drawing in even a little bit darker of a shadow so those ones in the foreground will stand out. And after I put in the leaves behind it and the background, that's when you really can see where you're going to need to add more shadows. So this is just kind of a beginning layer for the bananas. We're going to add more to it. I'm going to do the stem and that little fan part that holds together all the bananas and connects them to the stem. So there's, you know, four little sections of that and then the stem itself. And here's the reference picture, one of them. I'm using two different ones in making my own painting. You can see that's really dark in there, but you can still see the separation of where each banana is. That's why I say it's kind of like a fan. There's ribs in there. And they don't show a lot. We don't have to fuss too much with the detail. And on that picture, it didn't show that there was a stem going down to the main flower. And my main flower is different than in that picture because I added that top petal. I like the way that it curved back. So I'm going to go ahead and start the stem here and also that little fan part. Um, and I'm bringing the water up into the stems of the bananas that I already painted. Because when I put the color on, it'll flow right into that area, as you can see there. So that's already with the stem. So I'm going to show you more on how to do the stem at the upper part here. But basically it was all wet with clear water, yellow, and I added some green. And now I'm adding a new color in here. And it, this is the brown. And I always get that confused, but I think it's called raw umber. I'm going to look that up for you and let you know before the end of this video what color I use. But basically it's like a nice chocolate brown. I have all my paints in a palette and you know, I just kind of know where all my colors are because I just keep refilling them as I go but there's so many colors in watercolor I never remember all the names of all the different colors. So, and I'm just kind of drawing this kind of like stripes in there so I'm drawing my stripes in. And if you look at all my watercolor paintings on Facebook and Instagram, I don't use a lot of brown, <laughs> so that's why I'm confused of what color that exactly is. But this one does definitely need the brown because it's, it's very natural. Burnt umber is what that is called. Burnt We're taking the burnt umber here and I'm kind of trying to blend it into the base of those bananas. I want it to be a soft transition so I put it down where I need it darkest and now I just got a wet brush and I'm bringing that color softly into those stems of the bananas just with water just blending water into my paint that's already wet and this one I did not put the water down first I did it wet and dry which is wet paint on dry paper 
and now I'm bringing the water in just to kind of softly blend it but I wanted to keep the intensity of the brown on the bottom there I'm draw in a little bit of the shadow that is in between each banana so it's a little bit bigger space there than the ones up here so this one I'm just taking this slight tip of my brush and doing it a little bit finer Trying to be real careful not to make it all the same color. I want to leave some of that light in there. But in the shadows in between, I'll leave it real intense. You can always come back and make something darker, but to make it lighter, it's a little bit harder. It can be done, but it is harder to do. So you can do it right the first time. That always helps. I'm just taking some water and just blending that hard edge so there's no paint on my brush just water it just softens that edge a little bit and softens that line between the brown and the banana and that shadow there so just water on the paintbrush clean brush clean water just softens all those lines bring it up a little bit to the banana on the bottom of the banana because that'll make it have that kind of rounded shape there at the bottom just water on my brush so I'm gonna go through and do that to the stems kind of shade them just with the water bringing the paint from the bottom there to the banana and then we have more of these little fans to paint so this one here has more of the actual fan showing so there's kind of a row of dark brown underneath the bananas and then it kind of lightens up and gets dark as it's in the shadow I'm putting the water on because I really want to be able to have soft transition between my brown and my banana leaves. So carefully put it on, remembering that the paint will flow wherever there is water. And I kind of think that might be a little spot that's behind the stem, so skip that part. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring that brown up to meet the bottom base of the bananas. In the stem of the bananas there's like a little bit of a ridge there in the photograph but then I'm going to have to blend it up into the banana stems like we did in the other one so now I just have a clean brush it's got a little bit of the brown on it and we'll just bring that up one side to find the banana stems and that one's in a little bit more shadow because there's a banana in front of it just very carefully I'm kind of just go slow and see what the paint will do where is it gonna go so I didn't wet those stems too much just barely before I started to do this I just want to do it very gradually. I can always build it up, make it darker, which I'm going to do right here. I'll put a little bit more brown because there is a ridge, a line of dark brown there in the reference photo. And just kind of watch it and see what it's going to do. It doesn't look like it's going to spread out too much. So there's another darker line right there and then it gets real dark going into the banana so I'm going to use a stronger mix of my brown and paint that in it's still damp the paper is still damp from when I wetted it down before we started I'm going to try to blend that into the bananas and then the other side of that little fan would go right there 
So very carefully bringing it down. Okay, so now I have to blend the brown into the yellow without taking away too much from the sh definition. I want those little stripes to be in there. So we'll just take the thicker brown, go ahead and bring those stripes down. And we're going to have to blend them in a little and sh give them a little bit more definition shape. So I got a weaker solution of my brown paint. Just kind of tapping that in. I'm letting the paint flow on its own so I can see what it's going to do. I don't want to cover it up completely. But I don't want it to look too stripy either. So just let the paint do its thing. Let it see what it's going to do and you can always come back and adjust it. I'm just deepening up those shadows because as the paint absorbs into the paper and as it dries it lightens and they need to be a little bit more intense. And I'm just taking my brush, softening those edges. Just dipped in clean water. Just kind of bringing that brown up and wiping out where I put the brown in front of the stems a little bit. So it's still there, but you can extend those stems into that fan. And as I did that, you know, it, it lightened and blended in those stems down into the darker part where that's going to be really dark. So I will have to come back and deepen that up, but I'll wait till it dries. So just finish this part up real, right here and get it the best I can, knowing I can always add another layer. That's looking better. It's a little tricky, but not hard. And then I have a little bit of erasing there to do, but I'm going to do the same thing up here. So I'm going to start out this kind of wet paint on dry paper and define that um, stem and what's in between the bananas. Because that I want to keep darker. So I know that's got to be dark, so I'm not going to put the water under there. That way I can keep it dark. But now I'm coming back with a little bit of that green and I'm painting it underneath and that will soften into the brown I already painted and then this is going to be dark brown I don't see much definition in the reference photo it just kind of looks like it's very dark and you can barely see where the stems of the bananas are on this one I'm going to take that and blend it up into the darker stems and just let that well, paint do its thing there. You can see where it's just a little bit uneven and where the definition needs to be a little bit stronger. But now, because it was wet, it did kind of blend in a little more than I wanted it to, but that's okay because, like I said, we're going to come back and make those just a little darker. So this one's already dry. I want to make them match. So I did come in and darken that one up a little bit. And now the middle one needs to be a little darker. So I have to think about that. I want to make that shape on the bottom of the banana look round. You know how it bulges out and then comes in skinnier, thinner where the stem is. And then these ones need some shadow because they're underneath that whole fan so they're going to um, be shadowed but then still remembering that the light is shining up from the bottom so I don't want to cover it completely I want to leave some of that sunshine showing on there and in my reference photo these ones look like maybe they're a little bit on the right side maybe because the sun's been shining on them 
So I'm going to put a little bit of brown in there. I know you know how the bananas start with that light brown until they keep going and going until they get black and I'm going to throw them out. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit more brown here and I'm going to start defining that little edge got a little rough. And see if I can't get a little bit more definition on that side. So take a look at it. Take a look at it from afar. That always shows you where you need to add more. Kind of squint your eyes. That kind of brings it all to the foreground. A lot of times I'll set the painting across the room, which I didn't want to do now, but I'll set it across the room and look at it and see where I need more shadows. So here I think this needed a little bit more shadow and I'm not afraid to put in a pretty good amount of brown here because it's underneath that clump and I'm doing dry, wet on dry, so I'm doing wet paint on dry. I'm going to rinse my brush and come in now just with clear water and soften that edge and spread it out a little bit. Make it go around the bottom of the banana. And the same with the one underneath there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now the bananas that are in front of that banana, um, they're going to need some of that brown on them too. So that's the bottom. So I'm going to go across and Put wet paint on dry bananas, just on those few, because the other one next to that is now behind those. And now I wash my brush out completely and just taking clean water, just softening it all up and spreading it out a little bit. And try not to um, cover the entire banana, because this is just showing a little bit of shade and also where the bananas might be ripening from the sunshine. And then that kind of defines the, the sides of the bananas. Bananas as I call it. Those little ridges in there. And as my brush is getting a little bit drier, it kind of does a little bit of a dry brush effect as I spread it. Which is good because it's not so smooth smooth. I'm back with some more water and bringing it up just a little bit and less color then because it's more water in there. Just spreading it before it dries. So you have to work a little quickly. You don't want that paint to dry before you do this step. And just a little bit more on these. And go ahead and rinse my brush real good, get my clear water and blending, blend, blend, blend. Making it a little bit stripey. If it gets a little rough, that's good. That adds a little texture to it. Is That's how they would look in nature. Now that one got a little bit dry, so I am kind of scrubbing it a little with my brush to loosen that, that paint up. There. I'm gonna add some more water to it to soften it out. it and just seeing where those shadows would go. I'll bring a little bit here of the yellow because I think now that I put the brown on I the yellow is less intense. So I'm just coming back with a little bit more yellow because the sun is really shining up onto that cluster. Just a little bit. So that's you know wet paint on dry bananas, dry paper, and that paint will be a little bit more intense because it's not watered down from the water underneath that you do on the first layer. So you don't need too much. And then I need to do the same thing on these lower bananas. Those ones are in the sunshine. So I want to take the brown because they've got that little ripe edge. And then this one here, I want to make sure stem is in the shadow so I want to make that one a little darker which will make the one that's in front of it stand out a little bit further so this one 
one's a little bit more on the ripe side, so I'm going to add a little extra brown on there. And then I can define the two bananas by putting some just in front of the lower banana on the upper banana. And it also needs a little bit more yellow. So I'll just bring that yellow in, and as the, that yellow is also softening the brown underneath it. Some yellow onto this banana. It almost takes the place of water because the yellow is very light, one of our lightest colors. So go ahead and now bring in the brown on top of that yellow. That yellow is wet. So I got pretty intense brown here and I'm letting it have a nice soft edge with the shadow where it's underneath that banana. And just take my clean water on my brush, soften that edge out, wrap that brown around the bottom of the banana a little bit where it's a little bit ripe. I believe that's what it is from the sun. Now you can see those bananas are more intense. So they've gotten two or three more layers of paint on top of that base layer. And that's what they call glazing. So you just add it here and there where you need it. Or sometimes you put it on the entire thing like we're doing with the bananas with the yellow and it just changes the tone of it. But when you're glazing it really gives it a lot of depth. So you can do several, several layers of glazing in it. As long as you don't ruin what you started with as far as light and dark, it really adds to the painting. Those are nice and dry now. So. I have some lines in there that I think I could probably get rid of. It's okay to show some pencil lines in your painting, um, but you don't really want them to be prominent, so I was just erasing those. And now I'm going to glaze my bananas in this cluster. So I thought that, you know, as it dried, the green lightened up quite a bit, and I wanted to bring that definition back to the shape of the banana, so I'm adding another layer of the green on there and really kind of deepening up those ones in the background. So now it's separating the bananas more. A little bit of green on there, and as well as those. And those ones with just the viridian were just too blue, so go ahead and put some green on them. And because vir viridian was the base, it's blue and it's darker, they're still tucked behind. So they're still in the shadows. I'm going to do that to all my bananas, so that gives them a little bit more definition. I'm letting it have a definite stripe because that's the way the banana is shaped. And I want to kind of curve it to the shape of the banana. And I'm just taking a little bit of the green watered down quite a bit. Remember, the green has a lot of yellow in it. But just to sh um, shade those bananas a little bit. But I don't want to make them too yellow. I want those bottom ones to be more yellow than the top ones. Because they're more in the shadow. A little bit closer up view. Let's see. So you can see that there's definite lines in there. But when you look at it from afar, you don't notice that. So that's something else you got to think about. So it's always good to put your painting across the room and see what it'll look like because when you're painting on it up close it looks totally different you're just seeing small areas of the painting but you want to see the painting as a whole so this is what it looks like unfortunately this is a big painting and you can't see it all in one shot so I'm just kind of moving my painting I'm trying to move it slow I hate to make you seasick I hope it's okay for you. But now we're going to have to make those bananas connect to something. So there is actually a stem there behind the banana. So we're going to have to paint that in next. I just wanted to show you what those bananas look like once they're dry. They have a lot more definition, more, sh more shading. And by glazing it, it gives it a little bit more depth. Now 
Now in my paintings, I kind of don't go for realism. That's just not my style. But it's a little, I do follow a reference photo for most things. So here's the one photo. Those bananas, you can see that the very bottom ones are more yellow than the top ones. We didn't go with all those bananas. We did less bananas. So here's the one that has less bananas in it. You can really see those brown areas underneath the bananas right there and right there. And they're ready to pick. <laughs> That's what I think. But yeah, so you can see how they get greener and they're darker. But there's that stem I was talking about. That connects all the little banana clusters. That's what they're hanging on to. And you can see it in between some of those bananas. So we're going to paint the top part of the stem. And I'm going to show you a little bit more detail. Because the first part I just started painting it and... Didn't show you all the details because I know we have a lot of stem to paint. So start off with water just like we did the other because I want it to blend. So I'll go ahead and paint clean water using the same paintbrush all the way up and down that stem. I'm going to add yellow over the entire stem. And now it's, you know, nice and juicy wet so I don't have to worry about painting too quickly and I'm gonna just kind of put a little bit of green in there and then I realized I should have put the shadow on the other side so now what do I do well it's not too hard to fix because it's still wet so I'm gonna rinse my brush off wipe it off with the paper towel and then soak it back up just like a sponge it's called lifting so it's not the end of the world if you make a little bit of a mistake you can always lift it out as long as it's wet it's easier but you can even do it once it's dry so now I'm gonna put the green just a little bit ways down because of the color of the stem not so much shadow I'm gonna let that dry cuz I'm gonna come back and put the shadow in after it'll be more intense if it's dry so this is where the stem goes behind those bananas and as it's still damp I'm going to add a few stripes in and because it's damp it diffuses those stripes it's not a hard stripe they're very soft I draw those forgot to draw those stems in so I draw it before I paint it so I can really get a good visual of where it's going to be so it's not really right in that last one I'll put those little stripes in, but on the now you can't really see the stripes because they're in the shadow of those bananas, so I'm not worried about the stripes. I'm going to deepen that up and do it in layers. So I'm back with my brown, and they have a lot of dark, dark shadows back there, so the definition of the stem doesn't really show. So I'm going to go ahead and get in between those bananas where the stem would be and then put some shadow on the correct side <laughs> away from the sun and I'm going to do it very softly by just adding some stripes and more of a dry brush I didn't wet it down first I have the paint on my brush but I'm putting it on dry and here I'm putting it on dry so you can see when you put it on dry it stays where you put it it doesn't spread so I'm going to come back here and give a little bit more definition to the base of these bananas because it kind of spread and softened out as it was drying. But that's okay because you can come back and, and put some more shadows in there. So it's just dry paper, wet paint. So it's wet on dry technique. And I can do that same thing here. So I want them all to match. So I'm going to do whatever I did to the one cluster, I'll do it to the other ones also. Put a little bit of shadows in there. So in the next video, I'm going to do the leaves and the, and the background. 
So you can do just the leaves. You don't have to do the background. It looks really nice with just a white background. But I'm going to put a background in it. And then I'm going to show you a little bit extra um, bonus. A little extra technique to show you on the background so that you can add even more depth. Okay, so until we meet again next time, I hope that you have peace and love in your life. Be creative, be intuitive, be swift art. Okay, until next time, bye-bye.